What's up, brothers and sisters? Um, hope you have a great time yesterday, Thanksgiving, with your families and friends and neighbors and whoever you spend your time with, especially with the Lord and Spirit. Um, just want to continue uh, with the life of King Hezekiah. You know, I've been reading a lot about his life and what pleases the Lord and what displeases the Lord. So I want to read you the after effect after what happened to King Janikarith, you know, when the Lord stepped in and devoured his people who was threatening uh, Judah. So um, I'm going to read uh, 2 Kings 1937, the last one to remind you the last one we read so we can continue on 20 and show you what happens to Hezekiah and what does he do. All right, so um, verse 37 and 19 one day, while he was worshiping in the temple, this is uh, Zennacherib, of his god Nirash, his sons Abimelech and Sharizer cut him down with the sword, and they escaped to the land of Arara, Ararat. And Esherhadan, his son, succeeded him as king. So King Janekarev was murdered by his own children, you know, so and that was prophesied by the Lord. So that was that was gonna happen. But it shows you that evil on evil tends to happen. So um but I'm gonna continue reading two Kings uh twenty and I want you to pay attention how after a certain time of years of running a king Hezekiah as king uh, look what happens to him in those days Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death the prophet Isaiah son of Am Amos went to him and said this is what the Lord said put your house in order put your house in order because because you are going to die, you will not recover. That's a pro, that's a spoken by Isaiah because the Lord told Isaiah to told uh, Hezekiah, and um, this is what Hezekiah how he responds. Hezekiah turned his face on the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully. And with wholehearted devotions and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly before Isaiah had left the middle court. The word of the Lord came to him. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. This is what the Lord, the God of your father, David, says. I have heard you I have heard your prayer and has seen your tears. That's what the Lord is looking at. Like, how serious are we with him? I have heard your prayers and seen your tears. And then he says, I will heal you. God is awesome. <laughs> I will heal you. On the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord. Third day. I will add 15 years to your life. No, not a couple years, not three years, but 15 years to your life. And I will deliver you and this city from the hands of king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my, for my sake and for the sake of my servant David. Meaning he's not doing it for the current people. He's doing it for his name, you know. Then Isaiah said, prepare a, a poultice of figs. They did so and applied it to the boils and he recovered. So there's like medicine, a certain medicine they were doing. Hezekiah had asked Isaiah, what will be the sign that the Lord will heal me and that I will go up to the temple of the Lord on the third day from now? So he needed visual, reality, actual evidence that this is, this is true so he may believe. Isaiah answered, this is the Lord's sign to you that the Lord will do what he has promised. 
Should the shadow go forward 10 steps or should it go back 10 steps? It is simple matter for the shadow to go forward. Is that obviously is 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 destined to go forward. The shadow always goes forward. So do the opposite. Uh um to go forward 10 steps, and Hezekiah said, rather have it go back 10 steps. Rewind. And then the prophet Isaiah called up on the Lord. Call up on the Lord. <laughs> And the Lord made the shadow go back to 10 steps. It had gone down on the stairway of Heza. Okay, so that was pretty awesome, right? But look at what happens with Hezekiah when he is lit with joy. Obviously, I mean, you're going to survive. You're not going to die. You're going to be lit with joy and, and want to share that joy. So this is what happened when joy becomes a, a flaw, you know, and too much joy could cause you to be vulnerable. So look at this. Uh, Envoys from the Babylon. At that time, Merida Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters and gifts because he had heard Hezekiah was Ill, had, Hezekiah had illness. Hezekiah received the messenger and showed them all that was in the storehouse. So he was pleased that someone outside cared and gave him gifts. So he's like, oh, come here. I'm full of joy. <laughs> Check out what I have, you know. Um, so then show them all what it was in the storehouses. The silver, the gold, the spices, and the fine oil, and his armory, and everything found among his treasures. There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked, What did those men say and where did they come from? <laughs> and then Hezekiah was like, From a distant land, Hezekiah replied. They came from Babylon. The prophet said, What <laughs> did they see in your palace? <laughs> Oh, they saw everything in my pa in my palace. You know, he's still like not understanding what he did wrong. He did see everything in my palace. Hezekiah said, <laughs> and then there is nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord. The time will surely come with everything in your palace and all that your fathers have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. And some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood that will be born to you will be taken away and they will become a eunuch in the palace of king of Babylon. The words of the Lord you have the words of the Lord you have spoken is good, Hezekiah replied. He said it's good. Why did he say it's good? It's not a good thing. It's because it's not gonna happen in his time. So it's like, okay, uh, okay, it's not gonna happen. Well, I'm still alive, is it? You know, so so he's like, Okay, that sounds good. So that's kinda like messed up. Messed up reply. <laughs> um and for he has thought, for he had thought it was good. Will there not be peace and security in my lifetime? As for the other events of Hezekiah reign, all his achievements and all he made the pool into turn into tunnel by the way he brought waters into the city, and they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah. Hezekiah rested with his fathers. And Manasseh, his son, succeeded him as king. So, joy could welcome destruction. <laughs> as King Hezekiah was full of joy that he gets to live another 15 years and was sharing it with everyone, his blessing and play and praising the Lord that actually made him too vulnerable and allow the people to see his weaknesses, you know, and take advantage of him. So, um, for you guys, you know, stay humble, man. 
you don't have to let anyone know what the Lord is doing for you and everything. Sure, it's, it's normal. It's normal to be able to just want to share our joy, our success, of our accomplishments and what the Lord has doing. But it's best to stay humble, you know, because we're not supposed to be like, uh, you know, <laughs> boasting like that in a way where things are happening, you know. So stay as humble as possible. You don't have to show everyone what you have in your storehouse. <laughs> you don't have to tell anybody how much money you make. You don't have to tell anybody where you work. You know, you don't have to tell anybody what you're doing with the Lord. You don't have to know. You don't have to let nobody know what you. Where's your money going? You don't have to let no more, let nobody know how you're tithing. You don't have to let nobody know how you're taking care of the poor. You don't have to t let, let anyone know how you're volunteering places. That's all between you and the Lord. You know, so I mean, did you seen it when I when J Jesus was walking and he was healing people in miracles, and Jesus always tell them, "Don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody." But it's hard to tell anybody when you are lit up with joy. So it takes a lot more effort to humble yourself. You know, so do your best to humble yourself. You know, keep yourself quiet. You know, just be like anyone else. Just be a blessing in disguise. You know, um, where people are not looking at you looking up pretty and garments and everything like that you just want you just gotta be like one of anybody you know like a normal random dude that is blessing people you know that's what the lord is watching that's what the lord is pleased with doesn't want anyone <laughs> making themselves put a, put themselves in the pedestal look at me look at me look what i'm doing look at look at look at look at look at same thing like he, the lord say about prayers don't let everyone like see prayers and many words you're saying so everyone like oh this guy's praying this guy's a man of god yeah yeah look at him look at him. no man it's supposed to be like like privately you know and secret and no one needs to know you know and if you if you happen to come to a situation where it needs to pray then you go ahead and pray you know, but looking forward for everyone to see, to please people, to, 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 for people to praise you and, and whatever. Don't ever be a people pleaser, man, because that's going to welcome a lot of failures, uh, you know, a lot of disappointments, you know, so, um, just stay humble as much as possible. I mean, come on, Hezekiah, King Hezekiah started off good, you know, taking down the idols and worship and, and stop worshiping idols and abominate stuff. These don't please displeases God, and because of that, God blessed him. You know, and then over time, you know, he kind of like, kind of like slowed down, and it was a fearing uh, Shennacherib, King Shennacherib, where he was at the as walls of Judah. So then he started like plead with him, like, hey, let's 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 make a deal here. But the Lord didn't say that, you know. But and then. And then the Lord took care of as King Hezekiah because King Hezekiah went and prayed at the temple himself, you know, so that he may see his heart, how serious he sees the Lord and how serious he he's loyal to the Lord, you know, and the Lord intervened by t sending an angel and taking down all those armies outside his um, kingdom, you know, so um, God is awesome. You know, when, when, when you come to humility like King Hezekiah, at that one point when he was praying with the letters spread on in front of him and him low to the ground, you know, um, that's humility. You know, the Lord answers through humility, you know, not through primeness. So then Hezekiah, Hezekiah was going to die out of illness. The illness didn't come from the Lord. He just happened to get sick, you know, but the Lord said, hey, you're going to die. So get, get your house ready get your house in order which is for fathers you know take care of your children teach them what they need to know with the lord how to have a walk with the lord have uh how to seek the lord you know how to trust the lord how to overcome fear how to overcome um, problems how to discern you know all that you have to teach your children so they may be successful and strong and faith in the lord if we don't do that then they're gonna be lost sheep and vulnerable to the world the world will devour them the lord will take them captive the world will take them captive the mind will be set in, in the world and there's a lot of displeasing things that we're gonna see as they grow you know so it's our responsibility as parents and as fathers to lead our children to the lord so that they may have a relationship with the lord himself you don't force them to the lord but they have to have knowledge of the lord and how to seek the lord and how to walk with the lord and how to always return to him turning away from evil and have their own experience with the lord like i have you know i told my kids you got to be better than me 
can't be like me. You got to be better than me. You got to want to hear the God, hear our Lord. You want to want to see the Lord. You want to please the Lord. You know, it's not the, the way of the world where the spirit works. No, it's by the spirit. So he needs to accept the Lord in his heart so his spirit could help lead him what he needs to do in the world or her in the world. That's why it's led by the spirit, not by the flesh. And that's what I, how I walk my life, you know, no one can deceive me because the Lord is legit, you know, and you can turn away from people who are deceiving, you know, have to listen to them. But read King Hezekiah's life and see how there is ups and downs in his life. And no one in the Bible is perfect. <laughs> Not even Abraham is perfect. You know, everyone in the Bible had some kind of failure, some kind of disappointment to the Lord and some kind of flaw to the lord the only one in the bible is perfect is jesus christ so get your reading going and understand that you don't have to be perfect and the lord uses your imperfection for his goodness god bless you brothers and sisters have a great and awesome and fantastic day and weekend and remember seek the kingdom first first thing in the morning god bless you love you